Hello, welcome to Sunday service. I'm so, so glad to have you join us this evening for service. As you know, we are running a series on Psalm 23. And as you always know, I always ask the Holy Spirit to show me something new, something I have not seen. Whenever I, before I run this series and whew, the Holy Spirit always, always comes true. Always comes true for us in Activate Church. And I'm grateful for that. Now, if you've not caught up on verse 1, I think we concluded verse 1 last Sunday. Please go and listen to the podcast or catch up on YouTube. I mean, there's something about visuals as well. And we try to incorporate some visuals, you know, as we preach like today. We're going to have lots of it. So if you want to catch up again, you will do well to go back on YouTube and listen to it. Today, we are stepping into verse 2 of that popular Psalm 23. And before we do that, let's invite the Holy Spirit because, hey, he's the one that teaches us. He's the teacher. Sweet Spirit of the Most High God, I ask that you unveil yourself. Let your teaching ministry be felt, seen, enjoyed, and experienced this evening. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 2 of Psalm 23. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And he restores my soul. <laughs> Before the restoration, it talks about he leads me beside still waters. So today, which is the beginning of verse 2, I'm tagging it Psalm 23, green pastures and still waters. <laughs> Tighten and fasten your seatbelt. We're about to go for a ride. Like I said, I always ask the Holy Spirit to show me something new. And there's something about scriptures you must always learn. Whenever you're reading the Bible, try, this is what I do, try to embed yourself. I always use the cartoon Superbook. Superbook is a Christian cartoon that these characters find themselves embedded somewhere, for lack of a better word, in any Bible story that they are talking about on a particular episode. So if they're going to talk about David and Goliath, you will see these cartoon characters on site, on set, at the location where the Bible story occurred. So they are all seeing David. They are seeing Saul. They are seeing the armies of Israel and the Philistines. And of course, there's Goliath there. So they are just there <laughs> on set watching as the story plays out. And this is exactly what I do whenever I'm reading the Bible. <laughs> I have thoughts from Psalm 23. And whenever I read this verse 2, do you know what always comes to my mind when I read this verse 2? Green pastures. I always think of a lush green pastures. Like the one you are seeing right on the screen at the moment. Lush green. And I'm like, wow. That the Lord is my shepherd. He will lead me to this kind of pastures. <laughs> and this is exactly what the Bible is talking about. So it's talking about super abundance. When you put your trust in God to lead you to the green pastures. And I remember last summer we were traveling to, we took a road trip actually to Scotland. So we went to two, two of the major cities in Scotland. We first went to Edinburgh and we went to Glasgow, the capital. Even this summer, I think we are also going to Scotland. We are going further north. I mean, you guys, you think it's going to be an eight-hour journey from where we are, for that north in Scotland to Aberdeen, you know. And I remember as we were going, just before we got into Scotland, before the border, there is a popular tourist attraction here in northern England called the Lake District. And the Lake District is one of the national parks, like they call it in America, totally reserved by the government 
before you do anything there. In fact, there are some portions of it you cannot even do anything. You can't build, you can't do anything. So it's like a reserve, a natural reserve. And they have some farms in and around that area. And I saw some hills that is like a pasture and you see sheep on that green lush pasture. Some are lying down. Some are just taking a stroll. Some are eating. And in my mind, I was like, this is exactly what the Bible refers to or referred to or David referred to in Psalm 23. And the Spirit says, no, 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 no. Embed yourself. Embed yourself in that story. David did not live in England. Neither did he live in Africa where we've got lost pastures, well, in the south and southern part of Africa. He didn't live in America or Europe. No. He lived in the Middle East. Embed yourself in that story. And I went searching online. <laughs> To actually understand where shepherds lead their sheep. So I can understand this scripture, this popular chapter, perfectly. Or as well I should understand it. And you know what I discovered? <laughs> the green pastures that David talked about there was not the lush green pasture. That in fact, in Jerusalem in the Middle East, they often just have two months of here and there rain, if you know what I mean. In fact, it is said they have only about 25 inches of rain throughout the year. So at the beginning of the year, January, February, maybe some portions of March, that that whole Middle East, like the Negev, <laughs> is lush green, not even as green as it is <laughs> here in Europe or whatever part of the world you are from. But it is lush green. And the rest of the months of the year, it is desert. He said, number one, that the leading of the ship by the shepherd, he's not talking about leading them to super abundance. And I took my mind back again to the picture of the sheep on that plush pasture when I was traveling to Scotland. He said, did I notice something was missing in that picture? To be honest, the first time I didn't, I didn't notice. I said, Lord, I can't see it, to be honest. He said, look again. <laughs> I said, Lord, I can't see it. Then after some time, he said, I'm going to show you. He said, did you see in that picture a shepherd? I was taken aback. When you look at that pasture, <laughs> no shepherd. He said, listen carefully. In a lush green pasture there is no need for a shepherd just open up the pen let the sheep come out every day they will graze and eat and eat whenever they are tired once the sun is about to set they will go back to their pen they don't need to be guided and directed to the places where they need to find food I'm like, what <laughs> I'm like, what said, yes He said, go study further about the sheep, the, the, the shepherd in the Middle East. And I did. And I found that in the days, months, the toasted months, outside the raining season, that they depend, that is the sheep, depend on little sprigs of grass. And I understood that during the night that a wind from the Mediterranean blows across the land. I said that wind carries moisture. 
and it's a bit humid. So as it blows across the land, the hills, the stones, grasp the moisture, what we call the dew. The Bible talks about that dew. It says, so how good and pleasant it is for believers, for brethren to dwell together in unity and peace. He says, like the dew of Haman, the dew or dew is that little moisture that sort of fills the air over the night seasons. He says, so he says, this rocks from that dry nugget trapped the moisture from that wind. So you look at the the creases or where you find some, you know, medium-sized stones and rocks because they've trapped the moisture and the stone sort of covers that little portion of land or soil from the scorching sun so it enables the ground the soil to sprout a sprig. So you see it scattered around the negative. The ship on its own might not find the spring without the direction of the shepherd. So the shepherd leads them across the places, the paths, where you find those sprigs here and there for the sheep to feed just enough grass for the day. So they need the guidance and the direction of the shepherd to find the sprigs just to take a mouthful here and there, here and there, here and there, to satisfy them and to fill them just for the day. And as you know, to rightly divide the word of truth, scriptures must support this. And we will now go back to Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus, after being compelled by the disciples to teach them to pray, show them the pattern of prayer. He says, see, ask every day of God the Father for your daily bread. To give us this day our daily bread. So what is he talking about? A sheep must totally depend on the shepherd for his daily bread. That's why when you wake up every morning, ask God for your daily bread. Depend on him that day for your provision. Depend on him that day for the provision. This is the lesson behind the good shepherd leading the sheep to green pasture. So the green pasture they were talking about is not the plush pasture. He was talking about the dry, arid nigger that the sheep must depend on the shepherd for guidance. Now what am I saying? Am I saying that God doesn't want believers to experience abundance no no that's not what i'm saying god wants us to experience abundance yeah in fact has told us you do exceedingly abundantly far above what we ask so god wants us to experience abundance but the lesson behind the shepherd and the sheep is number one the sheep must learn to depend on the shepherd and the sheep must also learn to receive his daily bread from the guidance of the shepherd is all about trusting God for your daily bread. I remember when the children of Israel were crossing from Egypt to the promised land in the wilderness, God told Moses, hey, tell these guys that I'm sending them manna, angels food. But one them, they should just gather, I believe, a homer just for a day. They should just gather enough for the day. They should not gather for the next day. See, if they do, it will rot. And of course, some people 
will, like you all know, there are people that are just hell-bent on flouting the laws. And the Bible says that when they woke up the next day, that that uh, manna already had maggots, <laughs> worms in them. That means they decayed and they were spoiled. Why? God was teaching them. See, you are getting to the land of abundance. The land that flows with milk and honey. The land where that yields to its uh, inhabitants, gold, precious things, and all that. It's a land of abundance. But before they got there, God wanted to teach them a an important lesson. And what is the lesson? Depend on me for your daily bread. Yes, you will have abundance. Yes, you will increase. Yes, you will expand. But never forget God. Never forget the good shepherd. Always put your trust in God. That was the lesson. That was the lesson. I always tell my wife, I will never want to get to a point where I don't depend on God for provision. You know, the curse of wealth and riches is that when you have a lot of money in your bank account, somehow, somehow, we don't do it purposely. Somehow, somehow, when you want to do something, you just, mm, I can do it. You just go ahead and do it. You just go ahead and do it. You just go ahead and buy this. Just go ahead and execute that because you have the money already. You're not thinking where the money will come from. You're not thinking how you're going to finance that project because you have the money already. You just go ahead and do it instead of reverting to God to find out from God if you should do it. That is the curse of wealth. It somehow, you know, <laughs> takes our hearts, it seduces us away from God. And God does not want that. God wants us as the sheep in his pasture to constantly depend on him. So that's the first lesson. The second lesson is we always have to learn to be guided by God. Even if you think you know the answer, even if you think you have the solution, always revert to God. Always ask for guidance. Because when you have this attitude, you will always have God as number one. He's not your other option. He will always be your first option. He will always be your go-to. And that is exactly what God is trying to teach us in Psalm 23. And of course, you know what the pasture is. It's food. It's daily bread. It's provision. It's also, you know, bread, food, pasture is also a shadow of the word of God. So, on one side, he's also talking about being submitted as sheep to the leading of the shepherd to lead us to where we will always find spiritual food. The rightly divided word of truth that will help you grow as a Christian. Not noise, not fair sounding words. But the rightly divided word of truth that will curse you to grow as a Christian. Always find it when you listen to the direction of the Holy Spirit. You will find it. You will find that place. And when you do find that place, settle. They may not have the biggest church. They may not even be the biggest church. They may not even have the best music. But always look out for the word. Pasture is the word, not music. Pasture is the word. Anywhere the word is rightly divided, when you find it, settle. Because they will give you the word that you will grow by. Hallelujah. And the second half of that verse says, He leads me beside still waters. 
and he restores my soul. Ah, hallelujah. Still waters. Just like I always misunderstood the pasture, green pasture as a lush pasture, I also misunderstood the still waters. And the key is in the word still. So he's not talking about a fast flowing river. Neither is he talking about a sea or ocean. No. He's never been talking about a fast flowing stream. He's talking about like a bubbling brook. <laughs> a bubbling brook. It's just a little water path that is just still. The word still means it is not bustling, it's not bubbling, it's not even flowing fast. It is a stream that is just flowing slowly. Uh, whatever I, I, I think of this, the only place that comes to mind is where I'm from, my hometown. You know, when we were growing up, we used to go to the stream to fetch clean, I mean, crystal clean water that have been distilled in the mountains and hills. Oh my God. That water, oh, tastes different. But when you drink it, it hits you differently. What God put in the mountains and hills to distill water from rain, I mean, it's amazing. Now, when you get to that water source, it is just bubbling from the rock. Just, those little, little bubbles, not fast. And of course, it leads to a tiny stream. That is the kind of water David was talking about. Because, note, the first point there is, this stream of water is still not boisterous. If it is boisterous, like a fast-flowing stream or river, it will sweep the sheep away. And the shepherd doesn't want that. He will not lead the sheep to those kind of waters. Number two, it is quiet, not loud. Why if it is too loud, the sheep will be afraid as well. Sheep don't do well around loud noises. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number three, it is very, very shallow. It is not even uncle deep. <laughs> the kind of water David was talking about there is not even uncle deep. It is very, very shallow. Why is it shallow? So the ship will not drown. The fourth, it is pure and clean. The fifth, around the whole place, is the air there is clear and clean. There's something about running waters that affect the atmospheric air. I don't know, I can't explain it. I mean, nature is amazing. The air is clean and clear. It is the place God, the shepherd, leads his sheep to. It's a place where there is peace, harmony, unity. No, I mean, it is a place where after all the rush, you just need to slow it down. At times, things are happening to you so fast. You go to work, you need to do this, you need We get so busy and busy and busy for weeks on end that we don't take time to really slow it down. Because it is when it is slow, quiet, still, and peaceful, that is where you hear God speak. Hallelujah. Still waters. Is also a place of intimacy. That is why we need to develop that relationship with the Holy Ghost, an intimate knowing of the Holy Ghost for ourselves. And he invites us to do that in Isaiah 55 as well. He says, Oh, everyone who thirst, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Say yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. What kind of water that quenches thirst do you need to buy without money? What kind of water is that? I'm talking about salvation. It's a gift 
it is free. Jesus offered it to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. Free. He said, I will give you water that when you drink, you will no longer lack. It is that water, the overflowing cup. Wow, make sure you follow me throughout this series. I'm also going to show you a revelation of that verse 6 of Psalm 23. It is the water when you drink, you will no longer thirst. It's talking about salvation. And if you're listening to me, and you've not given your life to Christ, Jesus is inviting you through me to come and drink of this water that you don't need to pay any price for. Do you know why you don't need to pay any price for it? Because he himself has paid the price. He just wants you to come and drink. And how do you accept this invitation? Simple. By just saying the words I'm going to say, and I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've heard the word. I want peace in my heart. Sweet Jesus, come quench my thirst. Give me living waters. Come into my heart. In Jesus. Amen. That's it. If you've said these words, he's living in you. He'll be like a spring of water on your inside. That is salvation. Going forward, you experience peace like you've never did. And that's what the Lord wants to do in your life. To bring peace. To bring peace on your inside. And John tells us that in Revelation chapter 7. It says, For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountain. Yeah, fountain is the word I was looking for. Fountain. You know, the water where it burst bubbles. Oh my God, from the rock. Fountain. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Of waters. And God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. Jesus is going to wipe away every tear from your eyes. I don't know what you've been going through. Hardship. Struggles. Sickness. Pain. Depression, anxiety, fear, worry. Jesus is here. He's inviting you. He wants to wipe your tears away. He wants to take the pain away. I'm going to pray for you now. Father, let your peace that surpasses all understanding flood your hearts and your mind now in the name of Jesus. You will experience peace from God like you have never. He's coming right now, right now. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. If you are sick, that sickness is leaving now. In the name of Jesus. You're wondering how you pay your bills. You are crumbling under that death body. He's going to relieve the death body. I don't know how. That is his job. My job is to pray and believe. Be it cancellation, be it multiple streams of income, be it a windfall, I don't know. But he's bringing relief. That dead body on your shoulder has been lifted. He hears your heart cry, my sister, and he's cleaning your tears. It is your portion. Hallelujah. 